Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. I know we're the last session before the party, but I promise you that we are going to have energy, we're going to have debate, we're going to have insight, we're going to have new ideas, and we're going to have another beautiful Downton Abbey accent on the stage for you to listen to this Thursday afternoon. So, my name is Solitaire Townsend, and this is a poster made by my niece Grace when she was six years old about the way that she wants the world to be. This is her world. She did it unprompted. She did it with no help with the spelling, if you can tell, or the grammar. But this was what she passionately believes the world should be. Now, if you don't speak six-year-old, then I've given you a translation. <laughs> Cut down less trees. Use solar panels. Treat men and women equally. Put this in the recycling. I still don't know what this is. Help our world. And I think this is recycle, recycle, maybe? Now, I'm sure all of you have got children in your families who could write the same poster, almost with the same words, possibly with the same spelling. This is the world that we are in now, where children across the world have had education, exposure, fear, anxiety, passion, and hope about the world that they're going to grow into. In the UK, where I'm from, we have the first set of 21-year-olds graduating from university who have had environmental education from the day they started school. These are not children who need to be asked about how to save the world. Now, my job, what I do at Futera, is with slightly better spelling and slightly better graphics to do exactly what she's asked me to do. I am literally the smallest business which will be standing on this stage. Futera, my company, is 70 people around the world, offices in London, in Stockholm, in New York, in Mexico City, and we work with so many of the brands and friends that we have in this room. Danone, uh, L'Oreal, uh, Carrefour, Colgate Palmolive, Cow Corporation. We work with you, we work with these businesses in order to try to make sustainable development, try to make sustainability, by which we mean social and environmental change, purpose, citizenship, whatever you want to call it, to try to make it desirable to the consumer. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I've co-founded Futera in 2001. And in those 20 years of working with some of these amazing companies, across issues that have spanned sexual exploitation, child labor, climate change, recycling, social and environmental rights, all of the SDGs. There's one thing that, has, that all of them have had in common. All of these issues, all of these challenges, all of these passion points for young consumers. There's one thing which covers all of them, which is how honest you are about what you're doing on them. Honesty. Now, we're very privileged to work with the Consumer Goods Forum, the CGF, have partnered with Futera to look into this issue of honesty. Now, I'm going to talk in a moment about honesty versus trust versus transparency because they're different words for a reason, and they're not interchangeable. And we're very passionately focused on honesty um, uh, as, the, as, as the word we should be using. So in 2018, in September 2018, at the Sustainable Retail Summit, we launched the Honest Product. I know many of you are already using this. It's a guide to how to be open and transparent and honest with your consumers about the issues that you face on social and environmental fronts, an author on health and wellness and on safety. And we did some great research last year into 
where you think honesty and transparency is and where the consumer does. So we asked you corporate experts, this was marketers, brand owners, CEOs, we asked you what are consumers most interested in? The transparency about the product that they buy or transparency about the company it comes from? And unsurprisingly, 73% of you said transparency about the products. And 70% of the consumers agreed. They didn't want transparency about companies. They wanted transparency about the product that they're buying. However, you disagreed on how well you're doing. So 86% of corporate experts said they think that their consumer is pretty satisfied with the information they're getting. I'm not sure where these people are living, but f only 41% of consumers agreed in terms of their confidence and their satisfaction with what brands are offering. Now, this research was great. Thank you so much for those who participated in it. Thank you so much for the brands who are now using it. But as we've been doing workshops over the last few months on honesty, more and more questions came up. Where is the consumer really on this? Where is she? What does she think? And particularly, what do young people and new consumers think about this? So for this conference, over the last three weeks, we have won a survey in the UK, in the USA, in India, and in South Africa, asking consumers, are you honest? And I'm gonna run through some of that survey data really fast, because it's an incredible introduction to the two speakers that I have coming up, or the three speakers that I have coming up later. So first of all, and I've got the USA data first, we asked, are brands honest? Are they honest about how their factory workers are treated, how environmentally friendly their products are, how healthy their products are, and how safe their products are? Now, I'm about to show you data that we had to put into field twice, because when the first research came back, I was so shocked by it, I didn't believe it, and so I asked the research company to go and ask a different set of consumers just to double check. I'm not even gonna bother to show you how many consumers said they think you're honest. I'm not even gonna bother, because the vast majority of millennials, that's your uh, 22 and up to mid-30s, the millennials, the vast majority of them think that you're never honest or not honest enough on these subjects. Well over half on all of these topics, they don't think you're honest enough. That might not come as too much of a shock. We know there's an issue with trust with millennials. Many millennials are already parents now. They are homeowners. We know there's an issue of trust with them. What we didn't realize was how bad it was with the under 22s. That's your under 22 consumer. And by the way, we very carefully made sure that these were under 22s who were no longer living at home. These are under 22s who are themselves now consumer goods purchasers. And in some of the markets, India and South Africa, they're also already parents. 83% not honest, 82% not honest, 80% not honest, 72% not honest. Maybe the US is special. In fact, the US often has divergence to the rest of the world. Turns out, when we asked UK, India, South Africa, the statistics were almost exactly the same. The Gen Zs are not mini millennials. They are not the same as the millennial consumer. In fact, they are in some ways more similar to the boomer generation. They're more similar to the over 60s in their questioning of the information that they're receiving. But they still do want you to be responsible. That's millennials and Gen Z combined. They were exactly the same statistic. They do still want you to make a positive change in the world. Overwhelmingly, they want you to make a positive change in the world. They're not so sure if you're making it, though. So this is the millennials. There's a lot of information on this slide, and I'm running through it fast. This is the millennials. Again, remember the 22s up to mid-30s. Are you satisfied with the positive change brands are making in the world? Actually, millennials are pretty satisfied. 64% of millennials in the US are very satisfied. Only 6% are not satisfied. That goes down in the UK. We're always a little bit more negative. It goes back up again in India, although interestingly, Indian consumers not as satisfied as US. And in South Africa, there's great dissatisfaction with all institutions right now. 
with government, with business, all institutions are satisfied. Let me show you the Gen Zs. So we go from 6% of millennials in the US who are not satisfied to 27% of Gen Zs who are not satisfied. From 64% of millennials who are satisfied to only 12%. You've lost half of them, half of them. This is why we've almost got diametrically opposed results from the millennials and the Gen Z. They are not many millennials. And we see that same trend, not as strong, but we see that same trend across all the other countries. Now take, for example, India. In India, not satisfied, going from 7% up to 14%. It's still a small percentage who are not satisfied, but it's double what it was for the generation before. Now, we were just talking about small versus big. Which type of brands are most honest? Small business brands or familiar household name brands? Small business, familiar household name. Actually, the millennials overall actually do think that big household brands are the most honest. If you look in the US at that 30% who think it's small business or that 42% in the UK, that's what's driving this market shift. This market shift towards challenger brands, small business brand, is being driven by 30 to 42% of the market in the US and the UK. Then we get the Gen Zs. 65% of the under 22s believe that small business brands are honest to them and familiar household name brands aren't. Look at India again. India, a country where the familiar household brand is a mark of trust, and again, we've got almost doubling of the trust in small business brands. This is a trend, we see it more extreme in the US, but we are seeing it worldwide that the Gen Zs are different in their relationship to trust, to honesty and transparency. They are much, much harder than, they, uh, than the millennials. What would you do if you discovered a product was not honest? Choose an honest alternative. I think there's some honesty here. They're not saying they wouldn't buy it, they just choose an honest alternative. But look at the buy it, but get in touch with the company. Millennials are far more likely to engage with you. They're far more likely to get in touch through social media, to post that they're unhappy. The Gen Zs are not. The Gen Zs are you're in or you're out. I'm not going to get in a conversation with you about it. Some good news for those who are in baby and personal care and in food. These are the most believed, these are the most honest industries, less good news if you're in beauty and cosmetics or clothes and fashion. I think it's interesting that Gen Zs are trusting baby and personal care. This, this has been weighted particularly by India and South Africa where they're becoming parents. But perhaps the most important that I will share with you, the most important statistic, is how much do you care about honesty? How much do you care about honesty? We asked the millennials, 89% of them say they care about honesty. Ask Gen Z, 89% also care about honesty. Then we ask them, how much do brands care about honesty? Millennials, the majority of millennials, just over, just over 50% or 66% actually think you do care. Only 42% of the Gen Zs think you do care about honesty. So what is going on? How, in such a short period of time, in one generation only, have we got one generation who actually are passionate, they're change makers, they care about social, environmental issues, but they still have a lot of belief in the honesty of brands to a generation who absolutely don't believe you when you talk about these issues. Well, let's think about the iconic millennial, the millennial who was the poster child of millennials, who was who most millennials compared themselves when they were growing up. He is a disruptor. He is a digital native. He is a billionaire. He exists within the system. He may have disrupted it and remade it around himself, but he is a capitalist. Who is the iconic Gen Z? She is an activist, some would even say anarchist. And her primary message to her audience, the millennials' message was you can change the world. The Gen Z's message is you have been lied to. You have been lied to. This is what she is telling 
all those young children around are not just her, but the version of her in every country. They are telling their compatriots, they are telling the other children, you have been lied to. I call them the honest generation. Millennials drove brands to be purposeful, but Gen Z are demanding proof. This generation, this young generation, were raised on fake news, and they're questioning it. They are suspicious of secrecy, and they hold sincerity as sacred. I want to just stop there on the word sincerity for a moment. I've heard a lot about authenticity in, over the last couple of days. Authenticity is about being true to who you are. It's about tr being true to your origins. That's authenticity. It's all about you. Sincerity means without deceit. I think you're going to hear a lot more about the word sincerity alongside authenticity as we go forward. These are the honest generation, and they don't expect brands to be perfect, but they do expect them to be truthful. So how are you going to reach them? We're about to have a couple of incredible examples about how you reach them. But we're already beginning to see this from the challenger brands, from Everlane, the apparel and fashion brand, who is not just transparent about where their clothes come from, but transparent about how they price them. That's the true cost of that jacket is $100. We sell it for $150. A traditional retailer would sell it for $500. But you know how much profit we make. To RX Bar, that literally has given over the entirety of the space, the entirety of the territory on front of pack to being absolutely clear. Three egg whites, 14 peanuts, two dates, no bullshit. Sorry, it's cute when British people swear, I've been told. Uh, you, you is an upcoming retailer in France. It uses Snapchat to tell the story of, of its sourcing, particularly on fish, right from the ship. You can go on and you can watch what the labor standards are, what the environmental standards are, the, the truth in all its dirt, in all its reality of where your fish comes from. This is all great, but what if you're not perfect? What if you don't have a claim to make to these new Gen Zs? So we asked them, what would happen to your trust? How, how would it affect your trust if a brand were honest about an issue it was facing which it wasn't perfect on, with a problem, with a challenge? And actually, we have so much more data behind this. We went and asked them what issues they're interested in, what different issues they're interested in, how they compare the issues to one another. But what we found is that actually, overall, they would trust you more or the same if you were honest about a challenge that you were facing. Now, there's a lot about how you would be honest about that, how you would approach it, how you would share it, who you would share it with, when you would share it. But they are open to having the story because they know they're not perfect. They're open to having the story of how honest you're becoming. And this isn't just in terms of data. This isn't just in terms of putting information out there. This is CVS. So CVS Pharmacy down there in the US, CVS has committed to no longer using touched up, photo touch ups, in its advertising around beauty and cosmetics. It's going to be honest in visualization, not just in data. This is the world that we're living in now. We're living in the world of ask me anything, which are being run on Reddit with politicians. We're in the world of um, you ask, I answer. We're in the world of sincerity, of authenticity. And if you thought the millennials were asking a lot of you in terms of transparency, when it comes to Gen Z, you haven't seen nothing yet.